YouTubers, it's the Code Lady. In this upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to pass data from one view controller to another. This is a very handy technique to learn as you build out more complex apps. Now, this tutorial is just a brief sample of the material that's in my new full featured course called Learn iOS App Development and Make More Money. The course is over five hours long and I walk you through building out at least seven apps. I'll be adding more and more content to the course each week, so get it while it's still cheap. <laughs> Enjoy the upcoming video, and if you want to learn more, check out the link below or head over to thecodelady.com for more info. Enjoy the video! All right, up until this point, we've only dealt with one view controller. So in this section, I want to introduce the concept of using two view controllers. And basically, here I'll show you a little bit right here. We're going to have one view controller with a text field and a button, and then we're going to have a second view controller with just a label. And how this will work is the user is going to type something into the text field. So I'm going to say, here is some past data. And we're going to click the button. And up comes the second view controller with the text, here are some past data. All right, so let's get going with this. Let's close out the simulator. And let's go and create a new Xcode project. So file new project. It's going to be a single view application. We're going to click next. I'm going to just call this um, my past data. And by now, this should all be familiar with you to you. And I'm going to click next. Here we are on the storyboard. I'm just going to change out the first view controller to my usual 4.7 inch size. I'm not going to worry about the second view controller right at this moment because I just want to deal with this one. So let's drag out the elements that we need. So we're going to need a text field. Here we are. And we are going to need a button. So let me just skip that over. Grab a button. And I'm just going to change this button just to say send data. So I'm just going to go give myself a little room, double click in that, and just put send data. There we go. Okay, perfect. That's pretty simple. It shouldn't be anything unusual right at the moment. Um, while we're here, I want to shut out my utilities pane and open up my assistant editor. And I'm just going to make the connection for the text field. So I'm going to control. Whoops, here we go. Let me try that again. Control, click and drag to our viewcontroller.swift file. And I'm just going to call it my usual name, which is text field of type UI text field and hit connect. Good. All right. Now, normally I would control, click and drag from my button to my viewcontroller.swift file, but I'm not going to do that in this case. So let me just close out my assistant editor. And now I'm going to create or drag out a new view controller. So I'm going to go in, get my utilities pane open. I'm going to start down here and type in a view controller. Here it is. It pops up. I'm going to drag it out into my storyboard. And as usual, I'm going to just control, click and drag that. I'm sorry, control, cl click on this rather. Um, and then go to size, change that to a 4.7. Okay. Now, why is this one looking a little... Oh, that one says 4 inch. You know, I thought it looked a little small, so let's get that back up. Here we go. Now we've got two at 4.7 inch. All right. So now, this button, when pressed, is going to send information to this view controller. Now, before we do that, I want to talk about viewcontroller.swift file. So our file called viewcontroller.swift, if I were to just click on that, this sort of handles, and this is where we've written all of our code in all of our previous uh, le lessons. This one handles that one view controller. We need a second Swift file, okay? We need something else, another class that's going to control our second view controller. So let's take a moment before we do anything more here. Let's take a moment and do that. I am simply going to go up to my Xcode toolbar. I'm going to click on File, New. This time I'm going to say File. Not Playground or Project, but File. Make sure you're under iOS and that Source is highlighted. You're going to click on a Cocoa Touch class and click Next. 
Now you want to make sure the subclass is of UI view controller. Now you could be a table view controller, table cell, all these different options. You want to make sure it's under a view controller, subclass of that. And we're going to name it something. Well, I don't want to call it view controller because we already have a view controller dot Swift. So I'm just going to merely call this VC2. Basically stands for view controller two. And I will click next. And it's going to save into my project files and it's all set. And as you can see over here, it says vc2.swift. So I am just going to, just for my own sake, I like to pull these up and put them on top of each other, my swift.swift files. So I have a vc2.swift and a viewcontroller.swift. Okay, back in our storyboard. This one knows that it's going to react to code in the viewcontroller.swift. This viewcontroller has no idea what files or class it's going to control or that it's going to be con controlled by its code. So how do you do that? Well, let's highlight that second view controller. I'm going to go up to my utilities pane that I've opened and this third one from the right, which says show the identity inspector. I say it looks like a little newspaper. I'm not, I'm not sure what it looks like. So click on that. It's going to say custom class because we did create a new custom class and you're going to go over to the blue button, scroll down and you're looking for that new name that you just created. There it is almost at the bottom VC2. Click on that. Great. Now this one knows it's going to be handled by the VC2 file. This one knows it's with viewcontroller.swift. Okay, that's all good. Let's continue on. As I said before, this button, when pressed, let me just line these up a little bit better here. This button, when pressed, is going to send data from this text field into a label here. So I'm going to just, for right now, since I'm working in this view controller, I'm going to control, click and drag, but I'm not taking it to a file. Control, click and drag into the next view controller. Release, it's gonna say action segue, and I'm gonna click show. Now this is a segue, if I click on that, it says our send data button is gonna act as the segue into the new view controller. This is all important, especially when we get into the app we will be producing in the next section. All right, what's left for this view controller dot two? Well, we need a label. So I'm gonna go type in label. I'm gonna grab a label and I'm just simply gonna place it right there. Let me give it a little bit more room because I might wanna put some larger amounts of text in there. And I'm going to just go back into the um, attributes inspector. I'm gonna change the color of the text. There's, this is just because it's always fun to change color of text. No reason other than that. And then I'm just going to beef up the font. We've done this before. I'm just going to go over here, pump that up a little bit, and text align center. All right, that's good. Now, we need to connect this to our new vc2.swift. So I'm going to close out my utilities pane. And because I've highlighted this and I go to my assistant editor, it should automatically bring up let me do it right here, the vc2.swift file. That's great, see it's class vc2. It's not our viewcontroller.swift. Make sure you're not connecting it into the viewcontroller.swift file, but rather this new one. So as we've done in previous examples, control, click and drag, and I'm just gonna pop it in there, and I'm simply gonna call that label. Okay, our connections are all done. Our new viewcontroller class file has been created. I want to highlight this second view controller and make sure that I'm in the vc2.swift file. Okay, now we need to create a variable and let me write it then I'll explain why. You can see, I'm going to call it var output message. Okay, and that is going to be equal to a blank string. So we don't know what it's going to be equal to. I'm just going to initiate it by an open and close parentheses. All right, now let me explain this. This is a variable. It's going to hold whatever the person has typed into this text field in the first view controller. So the person types in something, they hit the button. When they're hitting the button, this data gets held into a variable called output message. And then we're gonna use that in a little bit further down um, in, a, in a moment. Now I wanna go back to my viewcontroller.swift file, 
because I need to write a few things for the first view controller. What I need to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to start writing a function. And this one, if you start typing in the word prepare for segue, okay, this is the one I'm looking for. Just type on that. It will come up with the open and close curly brace and the place to write your code. Now I'm going to write the code first and then I'm going to explain it. First thing I need to do is I'm going to create a variable and I want to call that second view. Oops, here we go. Second view controller. And that's of type BC2. Okay, what does this mean? Well, our variable, I'm calling it second view controller, is of type VC2. That's the class. This is this file that we created. So again, I'm going to continue on and then I'll explain it. And that is going to be the segue. There we go. Segue.destination view controller. I need to add it as exclamation point VC2. Again, variable, I'm calling it second view controller. It's of type VC2, which means I can access those variables that I've just created in there. And it's our segue.destination controller. And it's definitely our VC2. Let me say, explain that again. When the person is clicking on this, this segue, when we're prepared for segue, okay, we're gonna grab this information. Let me say this again. When we prepare for segue, okay, we are saying that the destination where all of our information needs to go is definitely this second view controller. All right, hope I didn't confuse you too much on that one. But let's, I'll recap at the end of that. All right, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna continue on. Now I'm gonna call upon our second view controller and I want that, that um, what do we call it? Variable called output message. All right, that is what we had called a variable in this. We just left an open variable of a string called output message. So back in here, I'm going to continue to do this. We're going to have this equal to our text field dot text. I'll recap. Second view controller, which is this. We need to access this from the first one. So sec hey, second view controller, give me your output message variable and fill it with a text field dot text. Now I've got a little bit of warnings. Let me just check to see what's going on there. Well, it just seemed to go away. Next, we need to go over to our view controller two and down below where it says view did load, we're gonna do something. Let me write it down as usual and then I'll explain it in a second. Our label dot text is going to equal whatever's in our output message. Let's make sure that goes away. And let's give it a run, and then we'll do a final recap on this theory. It seems to have built correctly. I'm going to click in the text field, and I'm just going to say, please pass the data. I'm going to hit this send data button, and it segues up to the second view controller. It says, please pass the data. All right, everything is working fine. Let's go back and recap. Our first view controller. All right, we've got the usual... IB outlet, uh, the usual IB uh, interface builder things, which is the text field and the button. We have a segue from our button to the second view controller. When we are preparing for the segue, i.e. we are hitting that button, we're grabbing the information here, holding it in a variable called output message. When we get to the next view controller, whatever's in that variable called output message gets loaded into the label. All right, hope that helps because we're definitely going to need this in our next section when we're building out our next app.